Welcome back to Behind the Headlines. In Arkansas, applications are open for the second year of the Education Freedom Account Program. It provides state funds for private school tuition, among other things. And Cornette Grajeda with the Arkansas Advocate News Service has looked into this expansion of what they call EFA and joins us now. Welcome back, Antoinette. Always good to see you. Hey, good to see you too. All right. So the governor recently talked about expansion of this program. Who for and how much of a private school student's bill is covered by EFA? Sure. So the voucher program is being phased in over three years with different eligibility each year. So in year one, it was open to students enrolled in F schools and schools in need of what we call level five support, um, foster children, students that are experiencing homelessness or students with disabilities, as well as children of active duty military. So in year two, it's going to expand to also include students in D schools, as well as children of veterans, military reservists, and first responders. In the first year, students were allotted about $6,700, and in year two, that's going to be increased to closer to $7,000, and it, mostly for private school tuition, but also for other allowable expenses, such as testing, school supplies, uniforms, things like that. So as more students get into this and more private schools uh, are involved or sign on, is there a cap on the state money that's available? So there's a cap on students in the first two years. So in year one, it was one and a half percent of the student population, and that doubles to three percent in year two. So that equates to seven thousand the first year, about fourteen thousand the second year. Um, the the way the law is written is that students will be allotted up to 90% of what is given to public school students per, per student. The law says that if there's not sufficient funding in year three when it, and beyond when it opens to all students, then um, it will be awarded based on its like priority of who's gonna get it. Um, the state is still finalizing the final rules for the program. So I suspect we'll see a little more details about some of those priorities should there not be enough funding in the future or in the coming months. So what do parents with this program like about it? I'm sure you've talked to some of them. I have. Um, for my most recent story, I spoke to a mom who had a couple of different reasons for why she, she liked this program. Um, her son is enrolled in a private Christian school, but he also has a lot of health problems. So for her, she was really grateful to have him in a smaller school where, you know, if, if he gets ill or something goes wrong, the staff will pick up on it sooner and can call her. Um, he also has to miss a lot of school for his health issues and the school is pretty lenient about working with him to make up assignments and things like that. Um, and of course, there's the cost part, you know, having a child with lots of medical bills that can start to add up. So having some funding to help support the uh, private school tuition is helpful. Additionally, um, she described herself as a conservative Catholic. So going to a Christian school where she knows what the curriculum is going to be and she's not worried about him learning anything inappropriate or coming home with questions. So for her, it was a little bit of everything, you know, the, the curriculum, but it's also having the tuition and the smaller schools and things like that. So tell us about a petition by opponents who are pushing a ballot issue to change part of Arkansas Learns from this EFA comes from. They don't think it's EFA is fair, apparently. Right, so For Our Kids is supporting an effort to amend the uh, education clause of the state constitution. What they are looking to do is to have the same requirements um, for public schools and private schools if they receive state funding. So as it stands now, the accountability pieces um, between the two schools are different. For example, um, public schools are required to admit all students, provide transportation, and administer annual uh, standardized tests, whereas public schools are not. Um, the educational freedom account does have a slight caveat that private schools that have EFA students, they are required to test those students, but just those students as opposed to like the whole student body as you would in a public school. Um, they are currently in the um, signature gathering portion of this effort. They need to get close to 91,000 signatures from 50 of Arkansas 75 counties by July 5th to qualify for the ballot. There have been a couple of groups who have formed in opposition to this effort, um, two of which um, some of their staff are folks that have close ties to the governor. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out.
So let's shift gears here a little bit and let's talk about another program that Arkansas taxpayers uh, are funding. It's the new, new quote unquote, tire recycling program. And it's running out of money again. Did I read that right? It could, it could be, yes. That is a funding the tire recycling program has been an issue for some time, but uh, officials are hopeful that we can make it to 2025, but have acknowledged that there's a chance we'll run out of money again this year. Mm -hmm. So the program is funded by state mandated fees, but those haven't kept pace with the rising costs of transporting and processing the old tires. Um, the government and lawmakers have generally been unwilling to raise fees. They don't want to ask people to pay more money, but this is an $8 million program in annual program, excuse me, and it crashed in 2022. And at that point, lawmakers appropriated reserve funds to cover the shortfall. And that's something that they could do again if that happens um, this year or next year. But otherwise, we have four tire districts and it's kind of up to them to operate the best they can with the money that they do get. Let's talk a little bit about the fees. So people pay to have their tires pulled off their car when they get a new set of tires, I guess, and then that goes to recycling. And then what does that cost? Sure. So when a customer purchases new tires, for example, there's mm -hmm. a $3 per tire rim removal fee. Um, if you buy used tires, that's just a dollar. And that goes to uh, retailers will remit that to the state to help pay for the costs of disposing and um, recycling the tires. Now you, you, you can avoid a fee if you um, want to do it yourself. So individuals can dispose of four tires a month at state permitted uh, facilities free of charge. So what has the long-term fixes the legislature has been uh, considering, and, and is there a chance that any of this will make it? We will see. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, so lawmakers last year, they cut the tire districts. There were 11, so they cut it down to four this year. Um, and a couple of um, state organizations have committed to uh, trimming their administrative costs to help try and free up funding because that is one of the issues that we've seen is i mentioned the three dollar um, per tire fee mm -hmm. and districts have said you know processing is about three dollars a tire but what happens is this program has an administrative fee so by the time the districts get the money they only see about two dollars and 31 cents per tire so they're already short there so the finance department has also this year, they've started trying to cite delinquent tire retailers for not remitting their rim removal fees. And at the outset, retailers owed about $4.3 million in unpaid scrap tire fees, but they've said that they won't be able to get all of that because a number of those places, those businesses are now defunct. So there, that's an issue there. But yeah. lawmakers have discussed two long-term fixes. One could be raising and restructuring the tire fees, but as I mentioned, folks are hesitant to charge people more money. And then there's the option of privatizing the program, which officials that participate in the program are concerned about. And they say that they think that would raise costs even more on consumers while also making it harder to dispose of the tires, which disposing of the tires is kind of an issue to begin with is you can't really put them in a landfill because they take so long to decompose, but then they also can hold water and that attracts pests and things like that. So a lot of moving parts here, but for mm -hmm. the most part, lawmakers are just trying to hang on until 2025 when they'll have their next legislative session and hopefully can have a longer discussion about some laws that can help address the issue in the long term. And one more side question, Antoinette. Uh, in doing this story, where do these tires go? The ones that get recycled, how are they used? Sure. So one thing that is emerging is um, there's a possibility that they could be used in Northeast Arkansas steel mills um, for uh, fuel. Oh. And just there just generally, though, isn't a big market for recycling them, which has been part of the problem is finding a place to recycle. <laughs> yeah. All right. We will leave it there for now. Antoinette Grajeta with the Arkansas Advocate News Service. You can see her stories and others from the Advocate reporters on the line and on social media, as well as this uh, conversation on ky3.com, also on social media, uh, Roku and uh, Apple Plus. Antoinette, we look forward to next time. Always good to see you. Thanks. Always good to see you, too. Okay. Take care.